Good day everyone. We have learned about the drone making, the various government regulations, and even the sector-wise application of drones, and what all is required for making them. However, along with drone making, we want to cover about the pilot training tool that is required for a person to fly the drone. In this chapter, we will learn the various principles and requirements from a drone pilot point of view. We will learn all about drone training and what is required to be a certified drone pilot. Let's start with first understanding the basic principles of flight of a drone. For some, it might be even a revision of the same. This chapter mainly focuses on people who are especially interested in becoming a drone pilot. So let's look at the first chapter which talks about the basic principles. To start with, let's understand the working principle of fixed wing and quadcopter. In the present slide, we understand the working principle of the fixed wing. Fixed wing drones follow the Bernoulli's principle. According to him, airplane flies because of the shape of the wing, also called as airfoil, which is put in two parts, the leading edge and the trailing edge. Air passing above and below the wing at different speed so that the air reaches to the same point at the same time. That is called as the fading edge. In general, the wing's upper surface is curved so that the air rushing over the top of the wing speeds up and stretches out, which decreases the air pressure above the wing. In contrast, the air flowing below the wing moves in a straighter line, thus its speed and pressure remain about the same. Since high pressure always moves towards the low pressure, the air below the wing pushes towards the air above the wing. The wing in the middle is then lifted by the force of air perpendicular to the wing. The faster an airplane moves or a drone moves, the more lift it generates. When the force of lift is greater than the force of gravity, the drone is able to fly and because of thrust, a drone is able to move forward in flight. According to Newton's third law of motion, the action of the wings moving through the air creates lift. Multi-rotor drone also works on the same kind of relative nature of force. That means when the rotor pushes the air, the air also pushes the rotor back. This is the basic principle that multi-rotor can go up and down. Furthermore, the faster the rotor rotates, the greater the lift and vice versa. As shown in the image, there are four motors along with the EAC and the side controllers along with distribution boards connected to each other. These motors can be manipulated for the motion of the drone as well as for takeoff and landing of the drone. The drones can fly in all directions, up, down, left and right, depending on what the pilot wants. There are various categories based on the size of the drone. The categories are, first is nano, which is less than or equal to 250 gram. Next is micro, which is greater than 250 gram, but less than 2 kgs. Next is small, which is greater than 2 kgs, but less than 25 kgs. Medium category, which is greater than 25 kgs, but less than 150 kgs. And finally, the large category, which is greater than 150 kgs. These drone sizes have been defined as per the DGCA regulations. The drone includes the following basic components. First, the flight controller. The flight controller is a board that directs the RPM of each motor in response to the input given by the drone pilot. The command, command from the pilot for the multi-rotor to move the drone is fed into the flight controller, which determines how to operate the motors and the sensors on board. This is a very important part, which is also called as a brain of the drone. Second is the ESC. ESC is an electronic circuit that controls and regulates the speed of an electric motor. It may also provide reversing of the motor and dynamic braking. Next is the power module. The core function of the power module is to perform motor power switching and amplification in electric variable speed and servo drives. Some power modules integrate capabilities and intelligence well beyond these functions. Next is the battery which is the power supply to the ESC power modules, which is basically the battery source for an entire drone. Next is the radio transmitter receiver, which plays an important role to establish communication between the flight controller and the ground station. 
to send controlling commands from the transmitter. The antenna is used to track the live location of the drone along with to get live feed from the integrated camera. The antenna is also connected to your GPS so as to provide the live location of the drone. Next is the propellers. It is used to produce a lift and pushes the drone forward, backward, up and down. Motor, which is a spinning device as it generates a thrust and spins the propeller to lift the drone and the UAV. Next is the camera and the accessories, which are important to provide live feed of the particular location as well as provide various intelligent data depending on the payload. Finally, the ground station, which allows to plan the mission, track all the parameters, battery status, drone coordinates, and everything. One of the main things that you will see in any drone, such as DGI, is where you see a lot of green and red indicators. There is a meaning behind these indicators. The front side LED indicators light up to indicate the nose, and the rear LED indicators light up to indicate the various status of the drone when the power is on, getting a firmware upgrade, and flying. So, whenever you see these lights, we alarm that either the drone is in motion or there is a calibration or various things that are happening with the drone. And these, all these light ups are defined in the DJI manual. Today, many drone cameras are available that capture 4K videos and higher resolution photos, and that can be mounted easily on a drone using the camera gimbal. Professional drones can be used for filming that can capture video up to 6K or even more and allow with the zooming capability. One of the most important things to understand for a drone pilot is to understand the aerodynamic loads. There are four aerodynamic loads, lift, drag, weight, and thrust. Lift, as we looked earlier, is a lifting force that a drone experiences because of the difference in pressure or the propellers pushing the air downwards. The drag is the resistance that the air provides when the drone is in motion. This resistance can be due to the body, due to the payloads attached, this is various components. So this is, to keep in mind, is the frictional or the negative force that applies on the drone to resist the drone's motion. The weight is the oil up weight of the drone that is acting through the CG of the drone. So keep in mind that if you have to lift or track, if you have to lift or come down, the drone is acting against the weight of the drone. And finally, the thrust is the thrust is the force that is responsible for the motion of the drone. So if you have to move more forward, backward, left, right, the thrust is responsible for the motion. So pilots usually manipulate the thrust for the motion of the drone. Well, some of the important maneuvers at drone experiences is first the takeoff, which is the drone takes off against its own weight because the pilot of the pilot command. Next is a flight where the drone moves, depending on how the motors and the propellers are manipulated. And finally, the landing the drone lands at a particular location and keep in mind that the drone pilot has to have a very controlled landing so you have to act against the downward force as well as the thrust force which is acting on the drone because of the crosswind or so. so all these maneuvers are very important to keep in mind for a drone pilot to summarize we talked about the working principle of the fixed wing and the multi-rotor then we talked about the drone size the various components what do the flight indicators mean, and various payloads such as the high performance camera. We also talked in general about the aerodynamic loads and about the takeoff flight and landing. In our next couple of lectures, we will see some more important parts which are important for a drone pilot to keep in mind, especially while flying a drone. Thank you very much.